and we are now recording. Okay, welcome to this meeting of the Amherst Energy uh, Amherst Energy and Climate Action Committee, or ECAC, um, which was organized to guide the town in meeting its climate mitigation and resilience goals. So those goals and the plan for getting there are adopted from the Climate Action Adaptation and Resilience Plan, or the CARP, which we're gonna be discussing today is in the context of our annual report. Um, and it was accepted by the town back in 2021. It took 2016 as a base year and called for a 25% reduction in carbon emissions by 2025, 50% by 2030 and neutrality by 2050. So this committee has two functions. One is to advise the town council uh, and recommend or propose policies or actions that will help us meet our climate goals. And the other is outreach to promote a just, equitable and speedy climate response through outreach and engagement of the town and local stakeholders. Um, so our first item of business today, uh, as always, is to find a note taker. So where were we on that list? Steve did it last time. Okay. Um, and I just realized I don't have the, so Steve did it. So last if we go back to the top of the list, we're back to Don. Don. <laughs> Don, would you take notes for us? Of course. Okay. Um, all right, and then the next item of business is to review the minutes, which I have now here. So let me bring these up. Very useful, nice minutes that refreshed my memory about what the heck we did a month ago. Um, let's see, where is this? Uh, where's the share? Share, ECAC minutes 731. Okay, can everybody see that? Or are you seeing something totally unrelated? We can see it. We can okay. see it. Uh, let me make it a little bit bigger for me, if not for you. Um, you, shoot, there we go. So these are the minutes from last time. Oh wait, did we, we do the minutes before we do the public comment, right? Right, okay. I didn't check to see if there there's was any. No, there's no public, so you're All good. Right. All right. Um, so last time we didn't have a lot of updates. Uh, we had some discussion about the rental efficiency bylaw and data that could be available from inspections instead of a bylaw. But there was one thing I noticed, which is Stephanie, your name here uh, that I've highlighted um, probably should be your last name. I'll correct that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So this we have to talk about today. Uh, I know report and town manager goals we'll get to in a minute. We heard about the greenhouse gas inventory from Honey Gala the municipal fleet greenhouse gas inventory. Um, and we had a lot of good announcements like the launch of the Valley Bike and the CCA. And I think we have another exciting announcement tonight, finally. <laughs> and we heard from Laura about the Jones Library renovation project. So other than the last name to be changed, any other comments on the minutes? <clears throat> if not, do we have a move to accept the minutes with the one change to the last name there? Laurie, can you close the minutes? Right. For the okay to close them. <laughs> Any objections to closing? Okay, stop share. Move to anyone want to move to accept the minutes? I'll move. Okay, we need a move and a second. This is I'll not second it. <laughs> <laughs> No particular order. Goldner. Yes. Roof. 
Yes. Allison. Yes. Issing. Yes. Drucker. Yes. Okay, minutes are approved. Okay, we don't have an audience. Um, although I do notice people sometimes actually watch these offline, which is good to know. Um, but that's something I think is on the agenda next today. I want to talk about all this in the, since we don't have any public comment, um, I think the next thing on the agenda was, yes, the annual report. So I requested that this be put up high because I really, um, I'm, I'm really sorry that I totally spaced that we even had to do this until somebody brought it up at the last meeting and I realized that I blew it. Because of course, for an academic, August is sort of hell <laughs> uh, as you're trying to get started for the new year. And I would have had much more time in June and July. So it's taken me a while to get my head around this task. And I've you know, been on the committee a while now and been chairing it for most of the last 12 months. And um, I'm, it took me a while to get my head around you know, what we are and what we're supposed to be doing. And it was only this last time through the carp that it finally sort of hit me. So I sort of want to talk about the big picture. And as I go through it, I want your help remembering what we did and what our priorities ought to be. Because I'm getting a pretty good list of what we did in the last year as I go through. I haven't quite finished going through all of the minutes from the last year, but I have been going through them. I've gotten through into February now <laughs> from last, I started last August. And because I think the fiscal year starts August 1 or July 1. When does the fiscal year start? Stephanie, do you know? July 1st. July. July okay. 1st. I, left, I left July out. Oh, well. So I was going to go from July to July, and I'm in February now. Um, but I want your help putting bits and pieces together. And I haven't really even begun to think about where we should be going, because I think that's something we need to do together. So um, let me bring up this document I have been playing with. It's by no means a done thing yet. I hope to be able to send you a draft of some sort in the next, it'll be two weeks at most. It's not gonna get in on time. Uh, there's just no way for me to do this right now, but I have most of the pieces of it put together and it's will be both shorter and uh, have more information in it than I think last year's did in some ways. I'm slightly going back to an older format, somewhat going back to an older format from two years ago. So let me share this. Laurie, I'm just going to ask now so I don't forget, but can you please send me uh, the draft that you're sharing so that I can put it in the packet? Yes, it Thank is you. a rough draft with notes and stuff all over it. So I'd like to clean it up a little during this meeting and then I'll send you that if that's okay. Sounds great. Yep. Um, Thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to share this and I am screen sharing. Why is that so small? I don't know. Okay, at any rate, let me make this bigger. Um, whoops, that's not, sorry, wrong thing just popped up in my window. Okay, there we go. So the top here, I'm not going to, I'm not going to belabor. This is just words to introduce the report and what ECAC is um, taken from the last two years, bits and pieces. Um, and I don't want to, I don't want to belabor that. I sort of want to start right, right here. Um, so there is a, in our charter, there is a requirement that we produce an annual report with the following five things in it. Uh, progress toward climate action goals, measures taken to reduce emission and build resilience, um, which is sort of like one, uh, evaluation of the effectiveness and implementation of those measures, which reminds me of the dashboard and the reports that the the students have been doing over the last couple of summers. Uh, funding needed to enable initiatives recommended by ECAC, um, which I have no idea what to say about, uh, and community engagement, which there's a lot. So the progress toward climate goals, I realized sort of putting this all the things I've seen in the last few years together, that that is probably most correctly done by referring to this chart that is at the back, not this, well, this too, there, there is a chart. There's two things I want to show you. One is this chart appears at the back of the CARP, right? And it's the, the one, two, three, four, five different 
areas in the CARC that we're supposed to be addressing as a community. Um, and the strategies to get there. And each of these strategies in this list has three, two to five specific tactics, okay? And so the, in bold here are those strategies. I left out governance because that's sort of a separate thing. Uh, and the governance things are threefold and one of them is providing multilingual. It, it's something that we ha I have a hard time figuring out how we would do. Um, so I, it's more, to me, it's more part of outreach and, and collaboration with the town and with other groups. Um, and I just noticed that it was left out of the last report that was done this way. Um, so I start with buildings, which is the second thing of those five There's, um, on the, uh, on the, in the chat of the chapters in, e in the uh, CARP. So each of these things like lead on affordable housing has, you know, facility has three in this case tactics to get there. Prioritize multifamily building and energy re retrofits, you know, PACE is in here somewhere, right? There's a lot of things that we've been working on that are related to some of these things. Energy, energy benchmarking, local energy benchmarking and disclosure bylaw. Well, we tried that, it didn't work, but we got something else instead, right? So a lot of these things we've been working on in some one way or another. One thing that maybe, I, I, the CARP needs to be updated, I think, is it next year? Stephanie, how often are we supposed to update it? Um, well, yeah, probably, let's see. Yeah, probably, if not next year, probably the year after. Yeah, because things like deep energy retrofits are being totally de-emphasized now, right? That it's been understood that they are very expensive and not always necessary. And it's unlikely that we're going to be able to get everybody to do it. You know, it's just too expensive. Um, you can do a not deep energy retrofit, a little bit of patching and, 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 and insulating and still have a good outcome. Um, and, and go to green energy, right? So this might change in the next version, right? That was, a, this was really big about five years ago, I think, and now it's not so big anymore. The well, I think it, I think it encom encompasses, I think you're right, but I think that we, what we probably meant here was not just that, right? Because underneath that includes air source heat pumps. Anyway, I think we were like thinking that was all one thing. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Encourage widespread adoption of efficient, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's not just- a We're definitely doing that one. <laughs> yeah, it's not just yeah. that, right, exactly. Yeah. So maybe just a refo refocusing of that. At any rate, there are things that, you know, we might consider coming up. And a lot of these things are things we've been working on. Um, and I can sort of go through and, and fill out which things we do go with what. So I don't want to spend a lot of time here. I just wanted to show this to everyone to realize that there are so many things in here. And I will send this in the package. So if you want to look through it, you can. Um, there's a lot in here. And a lot of it is stuff we've been working on. And if I go back and just try to, OK, now, now coming back from that. So my, my idea was for this to refer folks to the chart at the bottom, that chart that I just showed and go through and sort of, you know, highlight in green or something, things that we've had an uh, impact on in the last year, just in the last year. There's other stuff that's been done other years, maybe, maybe you know, mark in green things that are done, yellow and things we're doing this year, we did this year, and red things that still need to be done or nothing things that still need to be done. You know, I can go through and, and do that. Um, but what I need your help for is just going through these other measures here and writing down what we've done because this stuff is all going to get folded into one, right? I think that's how this is going to work. All of these other things are somewhere hiding in one in those in that chart. So um, so for example, so this is this is the meat. What I really wanted to talk about was this one through five here and five is far and away the biggest one I've gotten so far. So I'm sort of sorry Tony's not here because that's that's really something he's interested in. Um, um, Lori, can I just jump in only because I see something that needs to be changed? Go ahead. Under number two, the final thing about Amherst is now a community leader. Oh, yeah. We are not. We're applying to become a community leader. We're not right. there yet. That's so. why I wanted to do this. Yep. 
and I can. You applied this year or are you now applying? No, no, we are applying in December. We're just, we have, so we have a, cons we have a consultant uh, for technical assistance working with us right now. And that was a result of some sort of a grant, right? That was a request for, from the Green Communities Program. Yes. Okay. So I submit, submitted a request for technical okay. assistance and then the, we were granted that technical assistance. Yeah. And a lot of this stuff, I want to be really clear, Stephanie, this is stuff that you did. <laughs> that you know, when necessary, you if you need input from us, you ask for it. But I thought that we should, since we're trying to put forth the things that, you know, progress being made on the CARP, which is sort of what I feel we should be looking at, right? And, should... and yes, and I mean, to, and to be fair, uh, the things that we're doing that I'm doing, I basically have gone to the CARP and pulled those things out from the 2025 roadmap to pursue. Right. So, I mean, yeah. it's all, and I've said this so many times, it's us working together. We are all working together. So, you know, it's it's not inaccurate to say, I mean, I think what we want to say is, you know, the ECAC um, in collaboration with the sustainability director, I right. think it's really how we want to say things. Right, 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 right. And I'm going to put that in here. So uh, I'm just going to make a note here to make sure ECAC in collaboration with the sustainability director. Just want to make sure that is in there somewhere clear as bell. Um, okay, so um, things we've done to reduce emissions and build resilience in the last year, the new specialized building code uh, was passed in October, 2023 for implementation this July. At some point we'd love to get a report on how that's going, but for now, you know, that's something that happened. I think I have those dates right. Uh, new charging stations went in. Is there something more specific I can say about that? Stephanie? No, they're they're um, slated to go in. I'm hoping sooner than later. But we had a little bit of a snafu well report on that. But yeah, I would just say they're slated to go in uh, by December, 2024. Okay, we have a heat pump program, which I think you're going to announce something about today. Um, well, a little bit, yes. A little bit. Okay, <laughs> so we'll, we'll wait on that one. Um, CCA was uh, was approved. Is that the right way to say that? Yes, and launches uh, will launch November first, twenty twenty four, and I have information about the information sessions that I'll report out on. Cool. Um, Valley Bike was recommissioned as of August twelfth. Uh, I would say relaunched. Was relaunched the week of August twelfth, twenty twenty four. Okay. Am I leaving anything off here that I should have on here? Were there any other, anything? Um, let me think. Um, or anybody else can think of that they contributed to. I think you might want to mention something about the solar bylaw uh, because Dwayne was the chair of yes. that group. And I put that under community engagement, but it could just as easily be here. So yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I think what I did is, let's see, where did I put that? Um, da, 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 really ARPA. Here we go, ECAC member. So I think I put something like this, which could go up here. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, if you're saying to build resilience, I, th I think that's accurate to say okay. that, to put that there as well. Okay. Any, any discussion about how I worded that? I could start with solar bylaw. I, I, where, where particular individuals had a big impact on anything, I've been trying to credit them for it. Um, but I could easily say, you know, solar bylaw, I could move this around a little bit and say solar bylaw working group was chaired by. He did chair it, right? Yes, he did. And he was chairing as the representative from the ECAC, so. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he advertised that that's more of an outreach thing so that could be down farther but that was sort of part of that whole effort I think I think that whole solar bylaw working group might have been one of the things seeing that coming might have been one of the things that made him put together that 
that whole series of panel discussions at UMass. And Lori, can you, um, when you, could you scroll up a little bit and go to the CCA item and actually identify that as the Valley Green Energy CCA? Because wow. now we're, you know, we're using its program name. Thank you. Um, anything else in there? There was a lot this year. <laughs> um, so evaluation and of, of the effectiveness and implementation of these measures, I don't think this was supposed to be here. I don't know what that's doing there. Um, what I had so far was that you now different from two years ago, and even from last year, really, because I don't think it was done yet by the time the uh, uh, report was completed. It wasn't, and I think you maybe want to refer to that. Yep, so what do we want to do here? Um, how do we want to say this? We had the, if we had a greenhouse gas inventory, let me spell it out, right? Yep. Inventory completed in the summer of 20 by intern Caitlin Hart. Fellow, actually. Um, Caitlin Hart. Can we, um, now I, I assume that I have not had a chance to look at the dashboard to see what which of these are up there and if the results are up there, but do you have a- They're quick... all there, they're there. Okay, do you wanna give me a, do you, do you remember a quick sentence that summarizes things or should I go look for oh, it? Oh, I, I can I can go back. Let me help you with this offline at another time, but I can't just okay. come up with that off the top okay. of my head, sorry. Uh, so just another sentence that summarizes the results. Yeah, I mean, some of this, I can easily do a lot of this part. Oh, and a link. You. And a link, yeah, okay. And then um, we did, uh, there was also, oh yeah, was this last summer also inventory of news? Yes. And that was uh, Miguel by M I G U E L. Miguel, um, uh, I think it was Reese Gauthier. Uh, let me, I'll have to double check because right, so it was we'll last see. year. Okay, we'll get that. Uh, he was also a fellow? Also a fellow. My fellow. And you might want to say University of New Hampshire Sustainability Institute. I know it's a handful, uh, mouthful, I mean, but I think. We should acknowledge the program. Same for Caitlin. Same for Caitlin. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, and it's Gothers Rees. It's G O T H E R S hyphen. G O T H E R S hyphen R E Y E S. Race. Okay. Show this potential, and that I remember. There was I had a result in one of my notes somewhere or in the minutes, so I stuck that in there. But we can we can make sure we've got that right and maybe. And then this year there was the municipal fleet greenhouse gas emissions inventory done completed by also a fellow. Also a fellow. Any gala. And then some outcomes there. And that will be, yeah, well, I was going to announce this as part of my updates, but that will be coming to you soon. I just need to okay. give it one last review and then we'll send the final copy. Any other evaluations anywhere? Um, so we did the solar, there was this whole solar, um, I don't know if that should be in here or not, but. I think that was last, I think we reported year. out on that last year. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was done already. So um, there wasn't like a solar update or anything this year. It, the solar bylaw is really kind of the big thing for this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's still. And that's still, yeah. yeah, that's still being worked on. That'll be a while. So funding is something I think, Stephanie, I have to rely on you on, <laughs> for you on. Um, I did get a very nice, uh, a lot of information from Tony that I was hoping to discuss today, but if he's not here, I won't. Um, we'll wait till next time about uh, interacting with, he had some ideas for interacting with um, out for outreach. And um, I think 
saying something about, you know, what resources are available, what things cost. Uh, uh, it's something that we might talk about sometime, but um, for this, I don't, I don't really feel like that's our, you know, we, we don't, we don't have a budget. <laughs> well, <laughs> we, I we have a, budget. the sustainability yeah. department has a budget and right. I think, but, um, and I think that's, that's all in the annual budget report. So that's um, a great resource. Yep. And I actually, this year, unlike last year, there is actually a section for this, for a sustainability department. So the information is on that page. Excellent. And so it'll, it, as we go along forward, it'll be more robust. Right now, they didn't use the information from the previous year. So it looks a bit sparse and it doesn't look like there's consistency, but I've had a budget for a couple of years. So, um, but anyway, it was a success yeah. to get it in the budget book this year. So please okay. refer to it. I would yeah. appreciate that. Okay, so how do we refer to that? Um, I would just make a note for yourself to okay. check the budget book. Okay, can, the, you, can you make sure that gets into the um, okay check budget book for money here for budget the, report? Yeah, the the twenty. Uh, okay, FY twenty twenty four annual budget report. FY twenty twenty four annual budget report for expenditures in last year. Um, but this, I think, is also forward-looking, right? This number of funding needed to enable initiatives by the by ECAC. So that's where, you know, I know there's this perpetual request. Uh, I hope I hope gets funded for additional staff. Did I say that right? Additional yes. Staff. Okay. Um, and the, but the I, I want to note that the annual budget report also has a forward, you know, forward-looking section oh. so there's in each department it's not just about what you've done in the past year but there's also looking forward as well okay okay but if there are particular things that you anticipate spending money on that you know you're going to be needing to request funds for or something like that or if there are initiatives that ECAC has, this was one of the questions Tony had is, you know, what is our budget? What can we spend? Can we, how much money will we need to do something like this? Um, and well, then let me be clear. <laughs> then yeah. the sort of, you know, yes, this is sustainability budget, but there's like, you as a committee don't have a budget to right. spend money. You right. just work with me. <laughs> but I mean, basically the way it's been working is that I'm given the budget and as things come up, projects come up, opportunities come up. I mean, I'm finding that I'm paying for things like, you know, we need a part for the EV station. No one else, you know, DPW doesn't have anything allocated for it. So it's a $5,000 part. It comes from sustainability funds. You know, I'm making sure that things like that don't fall through the cracks, but that's right. what the fund is used for. Right. Okay. So, um, all right, I'll let you look at that. And if you have any input on that, otherwise there won't be too much in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for community engagement, there were a lot of things. And this is where I really need input from everybody because everybody's done something slightly different, right? Um, there was a sustainability festival and I'll put a date on that. And also a um, picture of the heat pump advice. <laughs> Five cents. I was gonna put that in there somewhere just for fun. Um, uh, thing. Uh, there was a block party last year where specifically we had been advertising the walk and roll to school, not today, day. Um, that was in collaboration with the uh, Climate Resilient Schools, which, and TAC. And I think they were calling themselves Safe Routes to School National Effort. And there's a, I linked that. So we did some collaboration there. We have to talk about the block party later. And I have to say, I'll say this now, just in looking back on that, we didn't have much of a chance to really talk to anyone at the block party. Um, people, it's noisy and people were walking around. Um, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it a little later. Did it make it onto the agenda? I hope it made it onto the agenda, Stephanie. We were covering it under updates. Updates, okay. We'll talk about that under updates then. Um, Jesse Selman was attending CRC meetings and giving advice um and offering expertise regarding the uh new specialized code so sort of outreach within the town i don't, I don't know whether i think that counts as community engagement we're supposed to be advising the town and that's 
part of the engagement we're expected to do. Um, Kathy Schoen gave us a, uh, we, we talked with her, she, she came and gave a presentation on the new net zero school building. And I thought putting things like that in was important, indicating that we're talking to different people in the community. And remember, I've only gotten through February, so I've probably missed a bunch of stuff. If you think of something that we did that involves someone else in the community, let me know. Uh, we advocated for the adoption of a rental unit bylaw that failed. However, this year with continued ECAC involvement, particularly from Steve, we successfully encouraged the town to include information about rental unit heating fuel use in periodic inspections. Did I say that correctly? That sound right, Steve? Uh, we unsuccessfully advocated for ARPA funds to be used for a solar canopy on the high school parking lot, um, but it was still outreach. <laughs> uh, in response to concerns about idling cars and trucks, we wrote a letter. This was D wrote the letter and both of us, I, she and I both signed it. We wrote a letter to the Gazette that was published on this date. Uh, Northeast Solar presented a webinar in January. The topic was solar in the built environment. 50 views to date, which is not a lot. We had some last year that had the year before that had like 200 views and the sustainability dashboard was launched. Um, I'll put these in roughly timeline order when I have a chance, but what did I leave out? Again, Lori, I can, I mean, every, I, everyone will take a look at it, but I okay. can look at it, you know, after you send the draft. Okay. All right, so that's really what I wanted your input on. The other thing I wanted your input on is what's gonna go at the end here, which I haven't even started to think about yet, is which of these things do we want to emphasize in the next year? You know, is there something specific that we wanna take on? And I had hoped to get as far as highlighting some things that I thought were ripe, but I didn't get a chance to do that. So it's a blank sheet. Um, I think to be respectful of everyone's time, rather than going through this now, we maybe take another two weeks, you know, we come back to this again in two weeks and try to, I'll try to put something together. You guys think about it and we'll have that discussion about what ought to be included in here. Um, and we're gonna be a little late to get these into the, I'm a little worried that we're gonna be a little late to get these into the um, town manager's um, goals for the next year, but we can try. And if it doesn't go in this year, we can maybe use it again next year. Um, when is that? When was that? Or when was or is that due date? Well, there's no hard and fast due date. The thought last year was that these reports ought to be submitted right after the end of the fiscal year, which is July first. And last year we submitted it in July sometime and didn't get to present until October which is, I think, can you remind us, Stephanie, of when the manager goals get put together? Um, I think they're just beginning to work on those now. I, I want to say that they try to complete them by December feels about right, but I'm not positive. Yeah, yeah and the, the problem is that December is always crazy and people are on vacation and if you can get two meetings in, it's really hard. So it would have been better to get this done a month ago and have it finished a month ago, um, or even two months ago. A month ago would have been fine, end of July. And I only wish I had not spaced this completely. Well, I will say, Lori, too, that a lot of the things that we were trying to get approved or move forward, mm -hmm. now we're in the implementation phase. So whereas the checklist above is all like, oh, CCA, heat pumps, blah, blah, blah. Most of that was just yeah. getting contracts done and getting things yeah. you know, to pulled together. But really this year is the start of actual implementation, which will right. start giving us some measurables so that by the next update in 2026, yeah. there should be some reflection of the implementation of those things in FY25. Right, right. So at any rate, that's my, this is my plan. You know, my plan here is to keep this simple, just a few paragraphs at the top, a reminder that we're supposed to report on these things or report on those things that consist pretty much of bullets rather than a lot of dialogue, um, a lot of text. And then a, a 
I think the community engagement thing needs its own at the bottom here. I think I put a paragraph where to go. No, that's last year's report. I thought I left a paragraph in somewhere about uh, governance and engagement, government governance. Sort of in here, some of it that uh, the town needs to take our, the climate future into account in all decisions. Um, I have to figure out if I, there's anything else I've left out there. And Stephanie, if you see anything that I should have put in or anybody, um, you know, anyone wants to write a paragraph they think needs to go in there or change anything on here, please just go ahead and do it and send me a copy. So I think uh, in this form, let me just do one more thing at the bottom here. At the very bottom, I'm going to take out the old stuff from last year. Uh, the other thing I'm a real big believer in, this was last year's report, I'm just going to, I'll put some pictures in, but this I will get rid of. I'm a real big believer in um, uh, addend, um, appendices. <laughs> you know, I'm going to tack on some of the memos and things that, that we produced in the last year. Um, there'll be some pictures and I'll tack on the memos, but they're uh, for your information only. They'll be, or they'll be linked. If I can't link, link them, I'll tack them on. But if I can link them, I'll just link them. So if folks want to look a little more into it, they can go to these links. All right. Oh, yeah, I was going to do one more thing and put it at the very bottom of this. Um, and it'll probably move up. Town manager goal suggestions from ECAC. Not evac. <laughs> there we go. And just, you know, this is this is the next thing we need to do next time. Suggestions, anybody? Does this look okay, Laura? All right. Yeah, I think it's good. Yeah. I'll keep going through the minutes to make sure I didn't lose any, miss anything. But if anybody sees something, like I say, just, you know, let me know and add it in. Yeah, Lori, can I just suggest if we, you know, this is a good draft that you've sort of cleaned up a bit and pulled together. So if you, if, if you send it to me and I get it to the group, mm -hmm. then people can either get suggestions to you ahead of the next meeting, or it yes. can be, or bring suggestions to the next meeting. I will certainly be looking at it and making some contributions or edits right. myself. So, um, and we'll get them to you. I think if we just try to have a timeline of when you would like to receive those edits, yeah, that would be helpful. The other thing is I got a response from Tony. Steve, did you send me something? Because I thought I remembered you sending me something and then I couldn't find it. I don't believe I did since okay. that request. I been, was also traveling and, and working abroad. August, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, all right, so uh, if, I, if I spaced anyone or lost your input, please let me know. I don't recall. I, I've literally been so just I had so much to think about in the last few weeks I can believe I misplaced an email or two um, or, or 100. <laughs> All right so let's get back to the uh, let, let me stop sharing this I'm going to save it stop sharing it um, and get back to the rest of this I think the rest of this might go quickly there's one other thing we need to hear about okay good so um, education and outreach Don any more for us on pace uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, Stephanie and I talked, but I'll just I'll defer to Stephanie on the kind of um, interrelationship between pace and the heat pump program. So, okay, yeah. um, that it updates. Okay, good. Tony is not here. Heat pumps. I have nothing more to add. I think um, I'm still doing consulting, but that has to stop soon. Um, actually, there is a, one thing that I want to, I mentioned this a while ago, but if we want to do another webinar of some sort, I would volunteer to do what, I, what I've been doing anyway, which is uh, taking questions. Uh, someone suggested in my neighborhood that we put together a uh, question and answer on heat pumps on, you know, change, electrifying your home. 
And um, it didn't actually, it, it doesn't seem to be happening. Everybody seems to have gotten busy with other things. But if anybody has an interest in doing that, I would be perfectly happy just to sit here for an hour. And, you know, it doesn't have to be during an ECAC meeting. <laughs> I can just sit online for an hour and field questions as a sort of an open house. Um, anyway, something I thought I might throw out there. Um, Lori, sorry, I have my hand up. No, sorry, go ahead, Stephanie. Um, I would actually like to do a um, an information session on the CCA. Right. So as and they they all have to be done before the opt out period ends, yes. which is October second. So I I will give an update on all the dates, but I thought it would be good to do one during an ECAC meeting. So I could do it either the next meeting or the meeting after, but one of the two September meetings, I would like to do that. Why don't we do that sooner rather than later? The opt-out ends October 2nd? Yes. Oh, wow, we haven't even gotten anything in our mailbox. It's yet. it's coming. You you should have got gotten one postcards. Yesterday. You didn't yeah. get it. You know what, Lori? You didn't get it because you uh -huh. have your own right. Right. separate energy supplier so <laughs> if you were on you only automatically get the information which is this is why we want to do the information sessions you only got it if you were an eversource basic rate customer so if you were not if you have a separate supplier energy electricity supply now you will not receive those notifications i should get some sort of notification no because it doesn't them. change no well there's i mean that's the thing you don't you get them automatically this is the way the DPU requirements are. You get them automatically because basic rate customers need to be notified that, that things right. are changing for them. Things don't change for you. Why we're doing these information sessions is to let people know, this is why we're trying to get the word out yeah, and why yeah, we're doing yeah. this, mm -hmm. is that if you have a private or separate electricity supplier already that is not Eversource, then you have to opt into the program. So this is what the information sessions are designed to help educate people about is the opt-in um, automatic, automatically being opt-in, but then also that people who have their own separate electricity supplier need to opt-in to the program. That's interesting. Okay, so... So you either can, you if you don't want to do it, you have to opt out. Right. If you want to get into the program, you have to opt in. Yeah, so, so that makes me think that we... Oh, go, oh, go ahead, Don. Um, I, 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 I probably shouldn't be taking up time with this um but you're talking about an october 2nd opt out date yes technically we are our energy is supplied by eversource um but we send more electricity to the grid than we use what what is somebody like what does the information say for somebody like me who's who's sending energy for solar? Yeah. You, so you have solar and that's what it's not going that's not going to change anything. It doesn't change anything. So it it just It doesn't change anything at all for okay. you. Okay. Don't change anything. Yeah. This is just I don't have I don't have to opt out. It, nope. It, my, you don't my, have to do my, anything at all. Excellent. Unless you the only thing so I mean there are a, a few scenarios but the the typical scenarios are that people have already are just on basic service, so they're going to automatically be opted in. And if they don't want to be part of this program, they have to opt out. If someone already has a, a different electricity supplier that shows up on their bill that's other than Eversource, they will have to opt into the program. It will not change how people are billed. They'll still be billed from Eversource. That will all remain the same. This is all the stuff that I'm basically going to be giving during the info yeah. session. So I can tell That's you fine. now, but we can save it for the info yeah. session. Yeah, we'll but all of that is in the automatic, like all the people that are on basic service are getting information in the mail. They've gotten a postcard just to alert them that the this program goes into effect November 1st. They have information about um, that there's more information coming, which is a two page information sheet that is giving them all the information about everything I'm telling you right now. It's right. much more detailed, plus a link to 
the Valley Green Energy site, which is our consultants monitor and that questions go to our consultant and they respond to the questions directly. Um, and then also to alert people that there will be information sessions, which is what I'm going to announce in a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's lots of press going out about those information sessions. Um, and so all of that is coming. And, but again, the, the, but the, but the period we're doing this now because the period of time to opt out is October, October 2nd, but anybody can opt in at any time. You can, so again, all of this information is coming. If you just like, like schedule me, I'll at the next um, session, I'll give all of this. Right. And let, let's, let's definitely schedule it for two weeks. Hence, I think that's the right thing to do. And um, unless you can't make it, it would be at, you know, sometime between five 30 and seven 30, pick your time <laughs> in that, because we're going to keep meeting at this yeah, time. As long as that's okay with everybody. Yeah. So that's um, September 11th, September 11th. Right. And I'll have just, yeah. So September 11th. And uh, I have one request um, since I don't get that, I'm curious as to what people are getting in the mail. <laughs> Any chance you could just send me a copy of it or scan it and send it to me? Um, it's actually, yeah, I can. Is it on the website? I, it's yeah. And I can, um, it should actually be in the, in the news item, I think, but it's also on the Valley green. I mean, if you just go okay. to the Valley Hello. green energy.org site, all the information's there that you need. Okay. I'll go there and look. Um, all right. And if you have questions, let me know. All right, we'll do. Okay, cool. So we got off the subject a little, but that was well worth it. Um, climate resilient schools, I still don't have anything more to say on that. I think we should, uh, well, maybe it'll start up again now that school's starting up again, but I never got a response to the things I posted on the Slack channel. So I think they have not been functional over the summer. Um, there was talk about them applying for money through the school system. I never heard back about any of that, so. So I think we're on to advisory and support activities. Um, I don't think there's much more to say. Is there anything more to say about the um, building efficiency? We got we got a report from Stephanie last time that said the data will be available sometime in fall, end of fall or early next year, I think, will start to become available. Steve, did you have anything to add to any of that? No, nothing, nothing new to add other than I continue to aspire to do some more research on how other communities have implemented building efficiency bylaws of different sorts. So I haven't started that yet, but I hope to do that soon and we'll share that with the committee when I can. Okay, so we'll keep it on for when that happens. Um, solar, I suspect there's not too much there either. Uh, I don't have anything on solar, does that? Um, yeah, I have nothing. I know the, the CRC of the council has been meeting a few times over the summer, but I have not been able to uh, watch those meetings. So I don't know if they've been working, making progress on uh, parsing out the draft. I can, up, yeah, I can update good. this because Chris Brestrup and I are actively engaged in this process with the CRC. I was not at the last meeting because I was on vacation. Um, however, what they are, what the last request was, is to share a draft uh, and get some staff feedback. Um, but uh, Chris Brestrup and I were sort of working on sort of cleaning up that draft. So uh, it was it's scheduled to be at the next CRC meeting. Um, however, I have just sent out a, an email today requesting that we put it off till the following meeting just to give us more time. So, uh, you know, it'll be, I, I think it'll be a while So Tony's not here for transportation if there's nothing else on solar. Um, and regional and state, there's a really unfortunate update, which is the last I heard, the, they actually sort of shocked everyone and the, did not pass any sort of a climate bill. So the bill that everybody was sure would something would pass at the last minute, nothing passed. And the last I heard from, I think it was uh, Joe Comerford, is that there's still some hope that something will pass in the special session or something like that that they do at the end of the summer, but I'm not optimistic. I've been told that before about a lot of things and nothing seems to ever happen in that session. Um, so I, I'm 
very disappointed, and so are a lot of people. You build it, you know, we're working on for, for a couple of years and you expect something to happen and then nothing happens. Um, so that's unfortunate because there was a lot of, a lot of stuff that seemingly everybody agreed on to decommission gas, which would have been nice. Um, at any rate, I don't know the details um, too well, but I do know that nothing passed. If I hear something different or if I hear something we can do about it, I will let you know. But last I heard, there's not much to be done. Um, so luckily, we still do have some good climate laws in Massachusetts. So <laughs> we got something to work with, which is better than some states. Um, community climate workshop. Uh, Don? Yeah, so um, I, I think I told everybody that, you know, last summer, um, last summer, just a couple of months ago when we were up in Damascata, Maine, which is mid coast Maine, um, the, the community was holding, you know, had held two workshops, um, I've, uh, climate workshops. Um, I've investigated it. It turns out that a number of the communities in mid coast Maine, Newcastle, which is the other side of the Damascotta River from Damascotta, South Bristol, which is down on a peninsula heading down to Pemaquid, um, areas in the, the Booth Bay Peninsula. It, and what it's about is that Maine has adopted uh, what they call a community resilience partnership. Um, that is in, con in, in, in conjunction with Maine's climate goals. And in order to be a member of the Community Resilience Partnership and obtain state funding for various projects, communities have to hold these climate workshops um, in which the participants, the community participants, and remember, these are small towns. So, you know, the community participants and, and the um, the turnout seemed quite significant. Um, but these uh, community workshops basically uh, survey what community members would like to see happen in furtherance of the climate goals, the, the the state climate goals. Um, so it's it's giving people information, it's having discussions, it's it's listing um, things like um, you, you know doing you know assessing the the range of the, of the various uh, community members climate concerns um, and putting this all together in a package, which is part of the package that get, then gets submitted to the state to become a member of this um, community resilience partnership. Um, and they end up, each community ends up doing a community climate survey. The The gist in, in my discussions with town members in Newcastle and Damascata is that um, they were very well attended. There was a lot of good ideas that came out from community members um, and that Maine is moving for, and, you know, and there's a lot of concern there because these are coastal communities. So, you know, th there there's the Coastal Rivers Conservation Trust. There are all sorts of um, uh other organizations that are kind of working in consort um, because of the concerns that climate change may have on the on the coastal communities in Maine. Um, it's it's it seems to work well, and they seem to have a, a significant amount of community involvement. I don't know how that would translate, um, you know, to a place like Amherst, um, but it seemed to have been pretty successful in these small Maine coastal communities in mid-coast Maine. Thanks, Don. You know, I'm always 
astounded by, I've heard all sorts of things in the last year about what other communities are doing and how they're doing it. And I wish I had more time. <laughs> I want to do all of them, you know? Um, sometimes I think, oops, sorry, sometimes I think, um, you know, the challenge in Amherst is that there's so much going on all the time, yeah. you know, and partially because we have three institutions of higher education mm -hmm. located in our community. So there's a lot of involved and engaged people doing a lot of different things. And so it's just, it's just hard to keep up. And when you're a small community and you can really rally people around a singular focus, it's so much easier, but people are so spread out here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I have to say, I, I took a I took a bunch of students on a hike today. It was supposed to be at Amethyst Brook, but we didn't have cars to get us there and back. So we just took a hike around campus, UMass, which is something I haven't done in a while, um, just to go through the woods and along the hills around campus and, and back. And I had no idea there are at least two additional solar canopies that have appeared <laughs> since the last time I walked by these routes. I mean, I knew about the big ones near the stadium and but there are at least two more that I had no idea about. I, it's, it's really exciting to see, you know, change happening. Anyway. And especially change that there's just no controversy about. Everybody loves solar canopies on parking lots. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay. So, um, any ideas? I mean, you know, this is something we should keep discussing, which is, uh, okay, so we have a, we have the CCA uh, work, uh, webinar next week, next time in two weeks that Stephanie's going to do, but um, there are other sorts of things we can do. I don't know if webinars is the right way to think about it or workshops. I like the idea of workshops. Some of the most interesting things I've heard in the last year are, are workshops that towns have held. Um, to get people help they might need to, you know, answer questions they might have, uh, troubleshoot, you know, things that come up. So if there are ideas for that going forward, we should think about that for the next year, right? The, oh, Stephanie has her hand up, it looks oh, like. Stephanie, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to very quickly say, I think um, the launch of the heat pump program will definitely give you an opportunity to do, be doing a workshop or yeah. two or maybe three. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. keeping that in mind. I was curious that with the launch of the CCA, are there roles that the ECAC can take in helping to promote either the adoption of the CCA or some of the more uh, the initiatives that might come once the program is established? The initiatives will be a while. So I think when that happens down the road, but that's going to be some time because oh. basically you need the funding to build. Um, what we really need are people to sign in and sign up. So people that are using their own other electricity supplier, we might want to try to get them to opt in you know we want to get as many people participating in the program because that's going to generate the adder funds that will be able to be used for programming um and again you know this is programming that's going to serve three communities so how that's all gonna you know play out is going to be interesting but um in any case right now the funds really are only identified to go to administrative support so that basically is bringing on a staff person to sort of work with supporting that program. That's really the first thing. The programming piece won't come for a while because even though uh, there's been some legislation to allow for that from the DPU, it's, you know, it's still going to be a while again before we, because our particular um, contract doesn't necessarily reflect that quite yet. It will. When the language comes from the DPU, then it will be updated to reflect that. So again, these things, it's going to be at least like a couple of years down the road. And are residents in these communities still eligible for the Mass Save program? Yes. Oh, yes. Yep. Still through Eversource, right? 
And uh, yeah, or, or National Grid, because it is in some areas. Um, yeah, if there were a way to, you know, I, I was thinking before when you were talking about this, Stephanie, that if folks like me who have are who have a different energy supplier in the resource, and I see you, Laura, give me a second just to address this. There, there ought to be a way to um, alert us that this is happening and why it might be a good idea to switch, you know, what the difference is. Why, why you know, most of us will be asking, well, why should I be paying more? <laughs> because it is more for for those of us who are who are opting into um, uh, you know some of these other you know what what is the difference what are the advantages and I know what they are and I I will switch but uh, others might not know right and um, getting something out even if it's just a letter from ECAC to the Gazette again something to reach out to those folks um, would probably be a good idea. Local Energy Advocates is working on that, but I don't think it would be, I think it would be great if ECAC did your own um, editorial piece. Yeah. That might be something you could do as a group. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about that as maybe after the next workshop. Go ahead, Laura. Yeah, thanks. Um, so, I'm just looking at the website for the Valley Green Energy and I see the two pager, which is helpful. Um, I think for folks, I think I've always found this program really difficult to understand and to explain. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's going to be one of our main challenges. Um, I think for folks that don't really care, it's not going to, they're not the folks we need to worry about. It's the engaged people in Amherst, which there are a lot of them. And I think we're going to have a lot of very technical questions yep. and questions into the future. And so I think, um, and I would not be able to answer those questions. Nor should you. Yeah. I just want to jump in. So that's why but we're going to get asked them. So yeah. like, we need like an FAQ. We need like, very, like we need yeah. like a lot of things to help that right right and some of those but some of those really technical questions too we're going to get directed to the consultants and have the consultants give our response so i mean we can give you the faq but it's not you know i think the thing about this community especially too is that there are people that have very very specific questions that i mean when we did the initial information session even our consultant who has been doing doing this work for years got a question that he even was a bit stumped and said, I'm going to have to get back to you on that one. And he said, this was probably the toughest questions he's ever gotten in doing any of these community sessions. So you're not expected to, I would just say that in those cases, and they will get back to people directly. So we want to make sure that people are also engaging with the consultants and asking questions to them to get the information that they're looking for. Um, we're, we're meant to sort of help, um, you know, guide people to getting what they're looking for. So it's not just, we don't have to be the ones with all the answers. We need to make sure that people can get the answers. Right. So that's all I wanted to say. I, I mean, yeah. we'll have a lot of the basics and you can cover a lot of the general stuff you can cover and we will and I will. When I give the presentation, I think you'll see that, that there's a lot there that you all can use. I think it's just that when you get to these really, really difficult technical questions, you shouldn't be answering them. The consultant should be answering them because they're the ones that have the background and knowledge, the specific knowledge that people are looking for. Yes. I wasn't saying that I personally would answer them, but I do think we need to collect them exactly. and have them somewhere. Like, I don't think. Yeah. Oh yeah. When we yeah. get them, we, yeah, absolutely. When we get them, we will have them. But I mean, sometimes I think there's going to be people that, you know, I, I don't know that we'll get like every question that's asked of the consultant will come back to us, I guess is what I'm trying to say. If we if we funnel them, then we can certainly have a, a chain of what those are. But 
and I could ask the consultants to keep track of the questions and then get the responses to us. But some of them might be over phone calls. I don't know how they're going to want to handle that, but I can bring that up with the consultants. I'll talk to yeah, them about that, I think Laura. To the extent that we can collect those and ha have a running list, the better it would be um, because then maybe the consultants wouldn't have to continue to answer the same questions if they're getting them. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, yeah, looking forward to hearing your presentation. And I think thinking through ways that we can help communicate because there's different there's like the different groups of people that want to hear different things that I think we need to think through as well. Um, so um, anyway, just saying that I still struggle with this. Yeah, and I want to second the idea of collecting answers and having a fact page on the Valley Green Energy if there's not one already and just adding to it as these things come in because that's, yeah. <laughs> I went to the LEA meeting last week and, and people were asking questions and there were some hard questions. So um, yep. Ben, ben Weil was, was uh, reporting from Northampton. Yep. So. All right, um, sort of got off the topic again, but again, that's okay. Town manager goals discussion I think is next, but I think that needs to be folded into the annual report, no? That's what you've done before. Yeah, let, let's let's put that off till next time and uh, as part of the annual report discussion. You can leave it on there separately, maybe right after annual report. Stephanie. Or I could put it as a subsection of annual report. Subsection. Yep, yep, yep. It I just to state though, it doesn't have to be part of our annual report. So like we could also, I mean, I think it sounds seems like it's all gonna happen at the same time anyway, but there's nothing in our annual report that requires us to include that there. Yeah, it's nice to have the context. When I when I reported out to council last year, you know, I, I was um, talking to to Stephanie about this, and uh, apparently, you know, most councils and committees don't report to the town council. But um, I sort of feel strongly that if you're going to have a group of volunteers and ask them to do a certain amount of work for the town and for the good of the town, that you should give them the opportunity, especially if they're presenting an annual report, to actually present it, even if it's just five minutes. And I found it very useful in presenting it last year to have, this is the annual report, this is where we are, this is what needs to be get done next. And it all flowed together really well, right? It all connected really nicely. And it made the case for why we need to do this next. I think just having a bunch of goals in the absence of that would be a little harder to do. Um, so at least I found it, you know, in summarizing it and presenting it, I found it very useful to have a report there, the report synopsis. Yeah, I think the challenge is though, is that like we send the counselors our recommended goals. Yeah. And then they do what they want with that information. I, and that's on a different timeline than this other stuff. Uh, okay, last year it was on the same timeline and I think that was the intention to do it in July so that it would be on the same timeline. Um, but they haven't started yet, right? So they're not on that timeline. Anyway, it doesn't they're, matter. They're starting to talk. They're just two different, they're two different things and I don't think we can guarantee that the counselors are reading our rule. I agree well, with you, we should present. That's I why you present, We right? should present. They're not going to read. I it. don't think the councils are reading our report and looking at the goals together. It's like I think that's happening. Yeah, in as as a member of the UMass Faculty Center, I can tell you that we never read reports. If there's not a if there's not a presentation, it gets completely ignored. Yeah. <laughs> I would say too that you can put it in the annual report, but then you can pull that same yeah. information out, out. and reissue exactly. it. So that there's also repetition is not a bad thing. Yeah. Send it again as a separate standalone section so I would do both because exactly. then they'll see it again and maybe things will stick yep yep that's exactly yep right all right so on to staff updates okay I have several things things you've heard but more information about where we are with with our programming so um, I'll start with the valley green energy information sessions because of these are the upcoming and most relevant so on Monday, um, September 9th, at the town council meeting, I will be giving a very short presentation about Valley Green Energy to the town council. 
Um, I don't know if I'll be able to get into all of the information. It's basically going to be an overview, but also to let people know that the next day, which is Tuesday, September 10th, we will be doing an in-person information session at the Bang Center at 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And Mass Power Choice Consultants will be there to do the presentation and to answer questions. So that's going to be an in-person event on Tuesday, September 10th. Then our big three community information session, which will be handled uh, over Zoom, will be done on Thursday, September 26th. That will be from 7 to 8 p.m. And it will be similar to the format that we did originally when we very first were applying to um, and we needed you know, community feedback on our application to the DPU. Um, it will be the same format, which will be our consultants, Mass Power Choice, will do a short presentation and then it will be opened up to questions from community members. And I will be facilitating the question and answer um, well, the whole session really, and the and the question and answer period. Um, so we will be reading the questions from community members, and they will providing be providing the responses. So um, and that's all through community. So that will be um, September twenty sixth, and it already has been posted actually in the community calendar in Amherst. Um, if it hasn't shown up today, it will probably show up tomorrow, or hopefully by tomorrow or by the end of the week. So. Um, so those are the, that's most of the information on Valley Green Energy. Uh, again, the program is launching November 1st. The opt out period is until October 2nd. Um, and then for the heat pump program, I can finally announce that we have a contract with the Center for Ecotechnology. So CET is our partner. What is really great about that is that they are already a massive provider. So they're, ironically, who they're most closely working with are Berkshire gas customers. And so they said, well, we, you know, we can work with our Berkshire gas customers. I said, yes, but we want you to be working with the oil customers. Those people who have oil are the people we really need to target, which they get, they understand that. Um, so we have a contract, we have not, um, I think they're probably working on some of the programming information on their end, but we, so we haven't met um, quite yet to sort of move forward but we will be scheduling an initial meeting, I'm hoping within the next week or so. Um, so that's really exciting. And what I will say about that in terms of PACE program, you know, the PACE program is that, you know, they work with the business communities. So they already have information on PACE programming. And when they work with businesses, they actually provide that information and that opportunity to the businesses and they supply them with that information. So that's gonna kind of be built into some of the outreach that they'll be doing hopefully with the heat pump program. So I just wanted to let you all know that as well. I just couldn't announce it at the last meeting. Um, Valley bike, as you all know, the bikes are so exciting to go by and actually see stations with bikes in them again. Makes me so happy. Um, unfortunately, the station on Main Street did not go back in, the one in front of Town Hall, because the station equipment was um, actually really rusty and it would also require, because they did all the new work on the North Common, it would actually require them to actually drill some holes because the old station uses electricity. The new bikes and the new stations and docking equipment that we're getting from Drop Mobility will not. It's actually all of the, the battery pack is on the bikes and they can be removed and charged so that part of the operations will be a team going around and they can see when like when bikes get to a certain percentage like it if it starts to drop below 20 percent power in the pack the bike won't work you can't you won't be able to use it so they are then notified they come and they recharge the batteries and they switch them out and so that's all going to be part of that operations process so we don't have that station for this season however um, I've asked and requested that that be the first station that gets updated in the spring of 2025. So the town hall station will be back in the, in the 2025 season. Um, but also to say that we just were notified that they're going to keep the stations operating through the winter. So Valley Bike will continue to run through the winter. But in the springtime, which I sort of considered like, even if they're there all year, 
we still sort of start the season in April. So in April of 2025, we should have a station in front of town hall and the other bikes and stations will start getting updated with the new drop mobility equipment. So there's that. It'll be interesting to see how used they get in the winter. I'm yeah, they well we did because we did have a um a pilot one year where we kept it going through the winter and um and it was successful and we and you know I think part of it is unfortunately and sadly because of climate change, <laughs> you know we're not having as you know quite the same winters that we've had in the past in terms of snowfall amounts. So, uh, but they are you know the bikes are programmed so that if there's you know any icy conditions or snowy conditions, people won't be able to take the bikes out you know, they just lock the system so that people can't use it. So, you know, they monitor those things. So it's only available during more favorable conditions. Stephanie, where are the stations in Amherst that will have the bikes? So they, all the other stations have bikes, all the ones that existed before, there's not new stations. So the ones that exist, there's one at Kendrick Park, there's one on North Pleasant Street, one, um, sorry, Kendrick, North Pleasant Street, University Drive. Um, there's one on, um, I think it's Northeast Street by the bank, um, that intersection on Main Street and Northeast Street, I think it is. Um, there's one there. The one, there is there is a, a station that's designated for West Street, but for some reason, we're having a really hard time getting the um, power supply. So I think, in 2025, when we get the new equipment, we'll be able to actually um, uh, get that that site up and running. But because right now it's required some power supply, we've just it's like basically one of those things where, um, you know, the um, the equipment just wasn't available to us. You know, we've just had a um, trouble with getting the parts that are needed for that. So. Um, so the stations are the same. There's not new stations. It's really all the same stations. Unfortunately, we're just kind of down the two West Street, which never was up and operational. And then Main Street, we're kind of down that station just this season. So all the same that were there before. Um, any other questions about Valley Bike? Okay. And then um, I wanted to mention something about the block party, which is scheduled for September 19th. It's a Thursday. It's from 5 to 9 p.m. So I have been asked if ECAC wants to have um, a table, and Lori can sort of say more about this during ECAC member updates. So I'll just announce that that's the date and time of it, and we have been asked if ECAC wants a table. So um, I think... <laughs> We can discuss that. Why don't we just discuss that now? So it's all sure. in one place. Um, yep. My experience last year that was that it wasn't a great use of my time. It might've been because we were too close to the music. Um, I don't want to do it again. I'd rather wait for the sustainability festival or do an online thing. But if anybody would like to do that and is going anyway and wants to give it a try, do it. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm looking for your input. Um, it's sort of too bad Tony isn't here. Uh, September 19th, that's just after the next meeting, a week after the next meeting. So we probably, um, maybe we should reach out to Tony. He may want to do it. But is anybody else um, interested? Well, I will say that, you know, I mean, I know, I know for Lori, it wasn't maybe successful for you last year, but we have had yeah. tables a few years in a row. And it's, you know, there's been a, quite a bit of engagement. And I think part of it is that people took turns at the table. I mean, the event is only from five to nine, it's four hours. So even if, you know, people took an hour each just to have a presence, we're going to have, um, Valley Bike is going to have a presence there for signups. Um, I'm, I would imagine local energy advocates are gonna wanna be there uh, promoting the CCA, but Valley Green Energy, but I am going to be at the town booth that will have some way to provide information. I'm going to basically be using the community dashboard, the sustainability dashboard as kind of a, you know, an opportunity to sort of walk people through that and where they can find information. But, um, you know, getting people to sign up for Valley Bike, um, you know, this is an opportunity for you all to get information to community members that don't, that aren't on utility, ba Eversource utility ba basic service to get information about Valley Green Energy. So, you know, even if there's other folks representing that information, 
you know, they may not stop at local energy advocates. They might stop with you or you can direct them over to local energy advocates. I don't know for sure they have a table. I'm just assuming they will. But even if they don't, you know, we just want to have a presence to really promote Valley Green Energy. So, I mean, that's something you can promote as well. Um, the heat pump program, I think, I would hope by September 19th, we'll have a little bit more solid information about that program. I don't know for sure, but hopefully we'll have something anyway. Um, so there's, you know, there's opportunity, there's information and in that, you know, these are one of the educational opportunities. This is an easy one and it's a really fun event. I love it because I'm not planning it. <laughs> so. I, I've enjoyed um, standing there and not um, not talking to a lot of people, but it seems like we do get people who jot their name down, um, people who look at the information. So it'd be nice if we could talk, spend some time talking a little bit about what, what might we do to attract attention and, and use that that venue effectively. And now I'm remembering that we had an ECAC banner I think I made it for the, where did it go? I, I think you have, had it. I You have it. I must have it somewhere. I just haven't seen it since then. It's probably sitting on a bookshelf somewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we do have some equipment. I have tables if anybody wants to borrow them. We have a big old banner. I always have clipboards and stuff. Um, <laughs> But I don't, I don't, um, I, I really, I just can't do it myself this year. I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> and uh, I, I think I can do things that I'm more effective at uh, virtually. So Stephanie, do you know when we would need to say yes or no, we'd like a table? As soon as possible. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, as soon as possible. So Steve, if you're willing to do it, would one other person help i mean if we can get tony involved he's he's very into outreach he might be interested right yeah that would be great i, th I think it would ideally more than two people from ecac at least who show up at the event yeah because it is several hours long and i, I think we did one yeah. hour since we cycled through almost everybody on the committee in the past yeah yeah i think um I should be able to help out at least a little bit. Uh, Thursdays are the hardest day with all my kids' activities. Um, but I don't think we need to stay the whole time. Like, I think once it gets dark, I don't think we need to be there anymore. Mm -hmm. so even if we're there from like five to seven, yeah, it should be fine. Five to eight. Um, I don't think we need to do any anything... <laughs> You could just have a sign that says, ask us about the Energy and Climate Action Committee. I mean, we need new members. So like one positive thing would be if we could get people to sign up and say they want to learn more about it and we can direct them to the website where they can join committees. So um, I tend to agree that it's not. <laughs> I would happy be happy to help out, assuming I can organize it with my um, kids stuff. Can I recommend if you had, even if like to Laura's point, if you're just, I mean, really, you just want to be having conversations with people. So even if you had like just a list of like, ask us about these initiatives, you know, and then just have a list of what they are and they can, people can just like pick one to talk to you about or, and I think it's also though, sometimes what happens is when there's one or two of us and you see other people and you're really engaged with just somebody, you know, or one another, if you're not paying attention to the people walking by, I mean, it's like, you know, being a barker, you know, it's like, you've got to really <laughs> reach out to people and say, Hey, do you know about this? I mean, so it's an, if you take an hour of your time and really spend it, engaging Amazing. people and asking people, I mean, and not just sitting there or talking, and I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I'm just saying that it's really easy. I do it too. It's so easy to start like seeing people, you know, and getting caught up in like something that has nothing to do with why you're there. But I think if you spend that hour, really, I think it will be really useful. So the other thing is though, that everybody at the block party, I felt a little out of place last year because we didn't have a banner. We didn't have any bling. <laughs> everybody there was giving stuff away. And I felt like, you know, we needed something. We needed, we needed a shtick, you know, we needed something to give out chocolates. I don't, I don't know what, what would, what does a climate committee give out for, you know, little tchotchkes that don't cost I can, 
I can look and see if I can order something quickly, um, you know, and see if there's something like, I mean, in the past, you know, one of the things that was really, I don't know what it'll be as popular now, but for the sustainability festival, one of the years where we had the recycling turn-in event where people were bringing, you know, um, some of their textiles and styrofoam, when they came with their bags, they got a, they got a reusable bag that said Amherst Sustainability Festival. And people loved it. <laughs> so I don't know how quickly I could turn around something like that, but maybe there's like a useful, reusable something. Yeah. I mean, what everyone has water bottles, so we don't want to go there, but I might be able to spend some budget on some kind of giveaway. Some small, some small thing. I, I, um, I don't even mind donating to help with that effort, but I just, I don't know what to yeah. So one of the, I think the first year we did it, we, I had printed out stickers, um, that I think were pretty popular. Um, so if we had some budget, I think I just bought it myself, but if we had a little bit of budget to print out some stickers, I mean, there's lots of climate change related stickers out there that we could, we could get and people put them on their water bottles. Um, the other thing that we've done, like, I don't think we want to spend a lot of time but like we had like one year we had like a board that had like, what are you concerned about with climate change? And we gave a couple examples and people wrote things up. Like it's just like a little bit of way to be a little bit more interactive and bring people over to the booth without um, like going, like, you know, trying to get them over with nothing. <laughs> um, I'm also not very good at like trying to get people to come over and talk to them. So if somebody comes and writes something that I would be more willing to like, yeah. age and, and you know if if we have a quiet spot mm. i might be willing to bring out the heat pump uh advice thing again but i it was so I, noisy last that year. i can't well i think yeah. the whole and you weren't even at i mean there was some music there's music at either end i oh. can't say where you'd be located i mean yeah. you get you're placed where you're placed i don't have any yeah. say over that yeah. because it's actually a bid event it's not even i mean the town coordinates but with them but it's really the bid is the one that we have to yeah reach out to and there's a lot going on it's not a place to have a deep conversation about anything <laughs> it's more of a you know what are you interested in here what do you want to know about the, ask me a quick question yeah that works you know but it's it's not um yeah i mean you know the one thing too is like what's a question to engage somebody about do you know where you get your electricity supply from? You know, like yeah. just a question like that, like where's your electricity supply from? And the people who are probably likely going to want to answer that question are probably the people who have someone other than Eversource. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if you saw that, you might be like, oh, I actually don't use the utility. And that's those, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. to find a question that will engage the people that we want to reach, I guess is what I'm trying to say. A I don't know if that's of, the right question. But. A lot of renters have a very hard time keeping their apartments warm in the winter. So just asking them, you know, how's your heat? <laughs> you know, how's the, how, how do your windows leak? You know, or is it, uh, what, what apartment complex are you in? You know, just, just getting, that was a big topic of conversation. It's a sustainability mm -hmm. fair, yeah. just getting people to talk. It's easy to get people to, to complain about their heat, <laughs> unfortunately. All right, maybe we should, it's, it's seven other, 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 um, we were doing updates, other updates. So, so block party, it looks like we have a couple people willing to show up. Um, there's a do list item of contacting <laughs> Tony. Um, shall I do that, Stephanie? Uh, say that again, the. I'll contact Tony um, if he's willing to. See sure. To go as yep. well. Yeah, just copy me on it because I will want to help sort of coordinate things with um, Steve and Tony or whoever. Okay. I mean, right now it sounds like, well, definitely S Steve and probably Laura, but maybe Tony. He's like a little iffy. iffy but um, yeah. Don and Michael, are you just out for doing any time that evening? Uh, oh. I'm supposed to be out of town, but that's tentative for work. But so I'm. TBD, but I and so I can't really commit right now. But if I'm available, I'll sh I'll show up. Okay. So it sounds like we can request a space, and the worst that happens is we don't show up. Well, <laughs> yeah, that is that. worse. <laughs> Come in for a little bit. I mean, at least do a five to seven, if not yeah. a five to eight. I yeah. I should be able to 
come for a little bit. We'll be coming back from Maine that day, um, but I think we'll be leaving Maine by noon. So I should be back here by four, four thirty. So okay. I'll, I'll I'll try to work that in. Okay, sure. It'll be a fun thing to just hang out for a bit. And I think, if I recall, last year we broke down early too. I think we broke down by seven thirty because then mm. it really cleared out. Like Laura said, it got dark. And people weren't really showing up so much. So, um, and it got cooler too. So. Okay. Other updates? Stephanie? Oh, not for me. No, sorry. I thought you were asking everybody. Yeah, no, I think we were just finishing up with your updates, right? And yep. now, okay. So let's see. In that case, um, blah, 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 ECAC member updates. Um, I have one I wanted to mention, but anyone have anything? So if not, I got a request through Stephanie for from somebody, and I just wanted to bounce this off you guys first to see if anybody has any information before I go spending time investigating. Um, let me bring up that email, Stephanie, just so I remind myself of exactly what the issue was. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so somebody is asking about uh, ECAT considering an action that Amherst adopt the recycling requirement that all takeout take home containers distributed by Amherst businesses are either biodegradable or white recyclable plastic. And the reason was, and this is what I'm not sure is correct, uh, is that the transfer station, they claim the transfer station as uh, they have this visual wall of things that are not allowed to be recycled. And among them are black plastic recyclable containers. And I thought it was because they are number fives on the bottom, not ones or twos. And I thought only ones and twos were recyclable. Am I wrong about that? The, and, number, has to, the number has to do with the amount of recycled material and content in the, in the container. It's not specifically about is it recyclable or isn't it, or it's just the amount of content? Are you sure of that? Like there's, yes, it has, it's specific to, it's specific to the, the content. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm not the recycling coordinator. So, um, but that was, I've been to, you know, enough workshops where everyone said the one and the two doesn't mean it's more recyclable than not. It has to do specifically with the content. Okay. So, so it may be that it's more recyclable it, because it's the type of, plastic resin yeah. that's in it the that's numbers right. every individual place takes different right. numbers right right so like what the amherst transfer station takes unless that stuff is going to the springfield murph which i'm not sure if it is or not like then the springfield nerf has things that they take and then if it goes somewhere else someone else yeah, so yeah. Like, you can't there's no so thing that yeah. like the one and two are recyclable and three and five aren't right it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. where you are i i thought well, okay well i will look into this then because i was under the impression that in general the lower numbers are more frequently recycled and whether they're recyclable or not the higher numbers are just not and uh this person was claiming that the difference was black versus white containers that black containers can't be read by the sorting machines, <laughs> the numbers can't be read. So uh, I'll look into it to see if that's right. If that is actually right, I will bring this up next time. I just was wondering if anybody had any prior knowledge about this before I go bugging people. Um, I'd never heard that before and... Uh, I've never heard that about black versus white containers. I mean, I've, I've heard black, the black containers are not recyclable but again it could be specific to the community, community right right so i, I i've it, never heard that before yeah i think it is generally true that a lot of those higher number plastics whether or not they're collected just aren't getting recycled they're they're for some reason they're they're harder to recycle and you know they just they're just not getting recycled they're getting they end up in, in landfills or so i think machines. um I, I got this email as well because it got sent to me er erroneously first. Um, 
I'm happy to talk about it. I think there's a lot of steps that need to happen before we would suggest exactly. like a ban on a certain type of plastic, including just maybe educating the business owners on on what to use and finding out what are using. But like, we don't like, I do not, I like, we, there's a lot of things we would need to understand. Yeah. Where is the trash? Where like, if it's, if it's being used as a takeout container and it goes to our trash can and my trash, my trash doesn't go to the transfer station. So what the transfer station does is not really of concern, right? It's where yeah. the trash hauler takes my recycling and wh what happens there. So like, How much of that? there's a lot to it, know there. There's a lot to figure out and it might just be an education campaign, which it may be something that we want to do with the bid, but I, I would, it would be hard, I think, to like pass some kind of like yeah. policy yeah. related All to right. it. All right. I just wanted to mention that because I thought, uh, see where we are on it and to um, maybe get a little more information before doing anything more um, or even discussing it more. I, I'll try to come back with some more information next time. The Springfield, um, last point is that the Springfield MRF does have like Springfield material or like recycling facility. They do have good stuff on their website. Like they have posters and shows that are cycle. And so it's, it's not a bad website. Okay. I will check that out. Oh yeah. I couldn't find specific information about numbers at the Amherst site, but I went there. I used, I've used it on occasion. And my recollection is they only take jars, containers, jugs that are that heavy plastic with a number one, typically at the bottom, sometimes a two. And that's all they take. So I was a little surprised to, to hear. Anyway, I, I could be remembering wrong. Um, all right, I'll look into it and report back next time. Let's not repeat any more things that could be wrong for the- Well, and recycling is complicated because like Laura said, there's no like one stop, one right. community does it all the same. It's different everywhere and how people deal with it okay. and what they take. All right, so I don't think I had anything else. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. I probably will leave here and then realize I'm forgetting something. Um, items for the next meeting agenda then, if there are no other, no other updates. So items for the next meeting agenda, we have definitely the annual report and the town manager goals under that. We have the uh, information session and Stephanie's gonna give a presentation. Um, and then, and then the usual stuff I think can stay on there. Uh, even if there's nothing to report, it's nice to have it on there as a sort of guide to things that we have been working on recently. Anything else? Do uh, you want discussion about the um, block party? Block party, yeah. Let's make sure that gets on there somewhere. At, at the very least, we'll just need to coordinate who's going to be there when. Yeah. Hopefully, we can come up with some themes or ways to get a, people's attention. Yep. Yep. Um, and sorry, I thought there was one other thing. Um, launch of the heat pump program. All right, well, you said you're going to bring back information about this request for oh, the recycling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you going to bring it to the next meeting? Um, I'll try to bring it to the next meeting. I'll we'll just put it I, on I, there. and Yeah, I was just going to reach out to, you probably know who the, actually, Stephanie, can I ask for you to reach out to whoever in town? is doing the it runs the transfer station i don't know who yep. that is and i'll meanwhile look up what happens at springfield and other places and also consult with my partner who does environmental reporting and reports on this sort of thing all the time and it's from him that i get that that not anything other than one and two isn't recycled anyway so <laughs> so i want to find out more about why he thinks that and where he's getting his information from okay i can reach out i mean it may just be they yeah i'll, I'll reach out uh, to the transfer station. Yeah. What, are, what, are the actual, what are the actual rules there? Because the wall of no doesn't actually tell you the rules. The rules were, as I recall, they have different bins and there are rules for things that go in each bin and the rules are posted over the bin. And that's the only place I've ever found it. It's not on their website. Okay, well, I can reach out to Steve and um, I'll just follow up with Steve and I'll report out at the next meeting when this comes up. Okay, great, thank you. All right. Do we have any public? No. Okay. <laughs> There's no public or comment. 
now that the we had a lot of well, okay. And now uh so with if nothing else, shall we adjourn? Yep. <laughs> See y'all in two weeks. All right. Bye. Thanks everybody. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. Bye. All right.